If you've been using Blender for a while, you know about the original text tool. But what if I told you there is an even better way to make text in Blender, and it's a lot more powerful. So I spent the past week and a half trying to see if using the text tool in geometry nodes is better than using the original text tool. And I can safely say it's an absolute yes. Let me show you what I found. The biggest difference between Geometry Nodes text and the regular default text is that Geometry Nodes allows you to make modeling changes that are completely non-destructive and you can change them at any point. So a change to the original text changes everything that you've added to it and you essentially have a tool. Just to get us warmed up to the idea, let's start out with a really cool example. First, we're gonna start out with the String to Curves node. This node is the one that allows you to create text. Then what you can do is just add an extrude node and you now have access to a lot of different things that really can take this much farther. So first we could just build kind of a wireframe system for it and you now have a bunch of new points so you can add some cubes to those corner points of this text. And I'll point out that the fill curves node has a nice little feature that removes those kind of pesky ingons in the middle, really cleans it up and makes it nice for these types of tricks. Now you can go ahead and duplicate the original text to fill out the front and the back of the text. Since the front and the back of the text are perfectly flat, it's very easy to map some image textures on there without needing UVs, and that's an easy walk in the park. And you can use some tricks to get the wood material to look like it's just one piece of wood across all of the letters. And of course, what makes this really fun, you can change what the text says at any point, it'll correct it to that, and it's really, really fun. Now, a really cool and very versatile approach to using geometry notes here is filling the inside of the text with objects. The distribute points on faces node allows you to do that, uh, but the biggest problem is all of the instances are touching, especially when you get a lot of them. But all you have to do is switch over to poison disk and play with that minimum value and it's gonna solve that problem just about 95% of the time I've found, just kind of playing with this quite a bit. And sidebar, the bolder the font, the more room you have to play with this and the text is legible. Then what you can do is use a collection of objects to instance them in that. And it's best to use a collection so that you can randomize all of them rather than using one object and trying to make it look natural and organic. The power of using geometry nodes here is you have access to components to edit things. So for example, I wanna randomize the rotation of all of the apples here. Well, you can do that. Then you can just completely randomize their lean and their complete 360 rotation to make it look organic. And you can also randomize the scale because not all apples are the same size. So this is just another example of the power of using it in geometry nodes. Might take longer, but I think it really provides a better result. And then from there, you can just, you know, distribute some apples to make it look more organic, add some buckets, add some lighting, and you have a really cool scene. And this concept is very basic. Say you can use nails or bolts or whatever you know, objects that provide the context to whatever piece of art you're making or what you want the text to say. This is a really powerful idea. Now, while I was researching this idea, I ended up making a lot of really cool project files that really I felt like needed to be made into their own individual tutorials. And those are all on my Patreon right now. So really, really cool stuff. All the tutorials are complete along with the project files and the models that I used in them. So if you wanna take this idea and learn everything about it, along with these step-by-step -step tutorials on each of these projects, that is on Patreon, along with a bunch of other really cool projects from past videos here on YouTube. So if you wanna check that out, it's a great way to support me and learn some really cool stuff along the way. Now, I will say there's a major setback that I found in a lot of the concepts I wanted to create, which is there is no way to bevel inside of geometry nodes. So if you have a project where the text needs to be beveled, and quite often if you're doing extruded text, you're going to have to bevel. Until we have a bevel node, that is going to be a major hiccup where we have to import the text, you know, create it outside of geometry nodes and then import it into geometry nodes basically removing a lot of really cool features that the string to curves node allows where everything is within one packaged node tree, which means I am here begging Blender to finish the bevel node. I believe it's in development. Once that gets done, this will really be a 
a fully very powerful concept. Now with that idea of importing text into geometry nodes, you can have a lot of fun with just simple arraying. Uh, for example, in this really fun project, I was able to get the text to be formatted in a circle and then get that to be animating like it's you know a wheel or you know just animating rolling in a seamless loop. It's really fun and you can just do tons of arrays. So another really cool example is using some of the curve presets that are inside of geometry nodes, specifically the spiral node. So just simply start with the spiral node and convert that to points. I'm just going to use a number for this design. It looked the coolest in my opinion. And then after that, I played with the spiral settings until I got something I really liked, added some random colors and in the materials, added some glowing, added some lighting. And this just simply looks cool. Is it usable? I'm sure it is usable for some context with whatever project you're working on, but at the end of the day, it's just cool and it's really fun and you can't really do this outside of geometry nodes as far as I'm aware and it just makes it so fun and so editable and just having fun with what you're doing. Now, making a neon light bulb in 3D is overdone, I think, but it's just so fun to do and it's really easy in geometry nodes. You can use the mesh to line as your array and then you could start modeling from there. What's cool is because you're able to still use the string to curves node by modeling the text and editing the thickness of it with kind of that simple wireframe system, you can have a thicker outer glass text and then an inner, you know, emissive glowing text, giving you a really nice realistic result. And it's so fun and it's really cool. You can then resample the curve to add some objects around it just to kind of make it feel a little more realistic and add some other trinkets on it that you might think looks good for the design. And of course, you can make it say whatever you want and you can have materials blink around and do some really cool stuff. Again, this project and a bunch of other ones are available right now on Patreon if you wanna learn exactly how to make all of these. Now, this one is super wacky. It's definitely meant to look kind of run down. Let me show you the step-by-step -step of how I did this one. So like always, we're gonna start with the string to curves. I'm gonna get the boldest font that I can find. I'm gonna fill that and I'm gonna extrude it. Now, when you extrude, you'll notice the back is never filled up. The way you can fix that is with a join geometry and then just bring the fill curve right into there and it fills it. It doesn't connect it. So if you put a bevel modifier on it, it's not gonna bevel that, but visually it does and that's what we need for this. I wanna convert it to a volume, but we need to realize these instances first so that it works properly just because these aren't connected it'll kind of confuse it now we'll add the mesh to volume and it's going to do that we can just bring up our density and we have our letters and we convert it right back to a mesh so now we have this and what's fun is we can bring our character spacing in they start to kind of go together like a meta ball which is the result that i was trying to find here i'm going to go ahead and realize it one more time so that i can go ahead and throw a decimate modifier on it and start to kind of goof with it, but make sure that it's still going to be legible with different letters. So probably right around there is going to be the best option here. And then now that we're done, I want to get another geometry notes workspace so that we can work under the decimate. So we add a new one and we go from there. First thing I wanna do is just add the wireframe system I've done on this channel about a thousand times. So you can go ahead and copy these nodes to get a nice little wireframe. Get a join geometry, now I wanna go ahead and delete some stuff. So of course, a nice delete geometry and a random value to tell it where and what to delete and then plug it into the join geometry and boom, we now have an ability to delete and now we have this sort of torn down sign and there we go. And with some nice materials and some not so great UVs, um, Geometry Nodes is not the greatest at spitting out UVs. This was the best I can get uh, procedurally, but it's, this is a good start and a very fun asset that you can of course change whatever it says. So you can go back to ge Geometry Nodes and say, no, which is lowercase. Let's try uppercase, no, no, or maybe why? but you kind of see the magic of this um, being completely procedural, all in geometry nodes. It's so cool. 
So there you go, that is the text geometry notes project that I spent a good while on and had so much fun with. If you know a lot about geometry nodes, you'll know this is kind of the tip of the iceberg of what you're able to do, because at the end of the day, uh, these letters and numbers are simply geometry. So the more you know about geometry nodes, the more you can make your text look super cool. Like I said early on in the video, if you want to learn step-by-step -step how I made all of these projects here, along with the project files and the models and all of that, that is available on Patreon right now. Full tutorials, really cool stuff there, and it's a great way to support what I'm doing here. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some fun stuff, and I will see you in the next one.